Now that we have a big picture of sets and what they are and how they work and subsets and power sets and empty sets and all this kind of crazy stuff, which, by the way, we've only spent about 50 minutes on it. Don't expect that you're masters at this stuff. It takes a while to wrap your head around it. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend you go back through these slides again and make sure you really understand it. Read the chapter, chapter 2.1, 2.2, okay? But let's look at now that we have some sets, what can we do with them? How do we manipulate them? Because remember, a set is the foundation of all discrete structures, all right? It's, uh, for most, anyway, maybe not all, but most. Um, what are discrete structures? Things like graphs, right? We learned about that in 2420, or you will if you haven't taken that yet, um, and uh, that, those types of data structures. This, they, they all relate together, okay? All right. So <laughs> here we go, back to our, our old language here. Um, I, I'm going to tell you how to pronounce it in just a minute, but we have this A with a line over it. It is equal to the following. Uh, Brian, give, take a shot at trying to read that, would you? Very good, yeah. So this thing that I haven't told you how to pronounce yet is equal to X, such that X is an element of the universe, which is what U is standing for in this case, the universe. And that's our old, like, day one little uh, logic thing there. X is not an element of A, okay? So this thing uh, um, is called, I think the next slide's gonna give us, yeah, it's gonna give us the name, this is called the complement. It's called a complement, okay? So it's basically, what this means is everything that's in the universe that's not in set A, right? So if A is the set one, two, three, what is a complement? This classroom, that eraser, that dry erase marker, my mouse, the number seven, Everything that's not one, two, or three is a complement, right? Everything in the universe. Now, my domain may have limited what that universe is. My domain might be just positive integers. Then a complement would just be four through infinity, right? Make sense? It's everything not in a. Look, the universe domain. The, the universe will be defined by what your domain is. Yeah, your domain is the universe. That's another word for it. So if I'm saying that, um, uh, like with our... Um, uh, universal quantifier, universal X in the domain of X. Uh, X could be just integers. That would be my universe, right? That's the universe. And we'll see a picture of that in a minute. All right. Um, let's go. Craig, you want to give um, the second one a shot? Try to read that. Whatever that blah, blah, blah equals... Okay. And what is that called? Anybody know the term for that? It's a union, a little U-looking symbol there. It's called a union. And if you know about database joins, this is a type of database join you can do, okay? And again, it's not a database class, but this is like a foundation of database stuff here. All right, uh, Sheesh, you want to give a shot for the third one there? Um, yes. So in this one, it's called? Intersection. The intersection, right? So A union B, the, the second one, um, X, a union B equals X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B or both, right? It could be both. A intersect B is equal to X such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. And the last one, Jace, you want to give it a shot? A minus B is equal to? X such that X is an element of A and X is not an element of B. Excellent. You guys all read those perfectly, man. Very good. You guys are getting your head around those symbols and everything. Very good. Okay. And that's called the minus operation. That's actually also a real database operation. Um, anybody here a MySQL programmer, or at least have been exposed to it? MySQL does not have the minus keyword. You can't do a query that's a minus, but Oracle does. You can actually write a, a query that uses the minus keyword, and it'll give you this exact result here. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at some Venn diagrams here. I'm assuming that you guys in your life at one point or another have seen Venn diagrams. We looked at one briefly in the slide before. Let's just quickly walk through these and make sure we understand where these fall in the Venn diagram, okay? So this is just a basic Venn diagram. We've got set A on the left, set B on the right, okay? What do we call this, If I, the highlighted green area? What is that? Union. That's a union, right? That's something that's in A or in B, right? Okay, we call that the union, which is that equation there, or the union, right? We good with that? Okay. What do we call that middle section there? Something that's in A and in B, right? That's the intersection. Hopefully that color looks 
contrasting enough on the screen there. Yep, that is the intersection. Okay, good. What do we call this? This bite out of a cookie looking thing. That is A minus B. That was harder to do than you would think in a PowerPoint to make that, man. That was tricky. Okay. Um, so, um, so A minus B. The definition of that is everything that's in A that's not in B. Right? So that little intersection piece that we saw on the previous slide that's kind of missing there, that's something that's in A, but it's also in B. I want stuff in A, not in B, and that is the minus operation, right? Everything in A, not in B, okay? All right, next one. What does A complement look like? This is not what it looks like. I'll give you a hint. What does A complement look like? So where would I put the green? That's going to be the color we use to highlight it. So I heard some people say the gray box. I heard something different from that, too. Who says the gray box? Oh. How do you define the universe? The universe is the gray box. Yeah. Everywhere but A. Right. So the gray box and B where it's not intersecting. part of B where it's not intersecting, right? Like that. That is not A. That's A complement. Okay? So look at the definition again, the green part there. Uh, a a complement is equal to X such that X is in the an element of the universe, which the universe is the whole thing, and X is not an element of A. That's all the highlighted parts there. That's a compliment. Uh, I got a link here, which should be live in your PDF version of this. This is a website I built. Um, and this is database set operations. I use this for my um, database class. Um, so let me just show you the sets here. You can play around with this. Um, click, there's set A with some numbers in it. There's set B with some numbers in it, right? Um, you'll notice there's the number 126 over here and over here. If I show the overlap here, that's where they intersect, okay? So the union of those two would be that. That's the union. That's A union B, right? Hide the union. The intersect would be A intersect B, which would be what? Just the 126. Yeah, just the 126, right? And then um, show A minus B, right? That's everything that's in A that's not in B. Because 126 is in A, <laughs> right? Bless you. It's also in B, though. Everything in A, not in B, okay? All right, so there you go. Now you see my web programming skills at work right there, right? Okay, so any questions about that basic idea there? Good? All right. To the whiteboards, um, maybe, stand by. No, uh, we're not gonna do it, we don't have time, okay? And we just had a whiteboard thing. We've, we, you guys are good. We're stretched enough. You're not sitting listening to me for two hours straight. Okay. If we had more time, we would do this on the whiteboard. But we're not. Uh, but if you're watching the video, pause right now and try to figure it out. So here is our given. The universe is 1 through 10, right? And that's a legitimate way to write that. And then A is a set 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. B is 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. C is 6, 7, 8, 10. What I want to know is what is the complement of A union B. What is A minus B intersect C? And the parentheses are like they work in regular math, right? They, you do that first. And what is the um, A complement intersected with B union complement C or C complement? So how do we solve these things? How do we crack these? What do you do? Do we have all the information we need? We do, but there's some other information we can sort of derive that we, we're not, we don't have just quite yet. What else do we kind of need? A intersect B. Uh, we, we, that, we're going to need that. Um, actually, we, looking at my questions I'm being asked, I would say we don't need that. Or A union B. Um, yes, we would need that. A union B. What else do we need? A minus B. Uh, yeah, we need A minus B. What else? Yeah, we need the complements of everything, right? So here's how you walk through these kind of problems. Find all of the single sets first, right? Uh, in other words, we already have A, B, and C. That's a single set. I also want A complement, B complement, C complement. In this particular case, B complement will not be needed, right? Because it's not anywhere my questions are being asked. Now that we have, we have all of the individual sets that we need, right? Now let's just do the math on them, right? So... The next thing we want to look at is resolve each piece of the equation separately. So we're just going to look at this first bullet point on the left there. 
the um, complement of A union B. And um, we're, we're going to first solve A union B, right? Just do it a piece at a time, okay? Um, so solve A union B, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly because I think you guys can see that relatively easily. Would you agree that A union B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8? Look at those closely. A and B both have 1. They both have 2. They both have 3. They both have 4. But then 5 is in B, and 7 is in B, and 8 is in A. That's everything that's in one of those two. Right? Okay. Then what's the complement of that? Everything 1 through 10 that's not in that list. That's the complement. Right? So the complement of that, 6, 9, and 10. Make sense? Okay. Next one will go a little quicker. A minus B. We're looking at the second bullet point. We're going to solve A minus B first, then we're going to intersect that with C. Well, what's A minus B? It's everything in A that's not in B. What is that? 4 and 8. 4 and 8. Yep. Very good. Okay. And now I'm just going to intersect 4 and 8 with C, right? 4 and 8 intersect with C? Just 8. Yeah. Good? Pretty simple? Okay. With a Venn diagram, it's even easier to see, right? But you don't always have a Venn diagram. I could diagram this out if I wanted to, okay? Let's look at the third one there. Complement A intersect with B union complement C. Let's start with B union complement C. I already know A intersects, or A complement, right? I've already got that. Let's look at B union complement C. I have B. I've got complement C. Let's just union them. So that's everything that's in B or complement C, right? What is that? Uh, yeah, I heard four. I don't believe four. Is, oh, complement. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep, very good. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. Yeah? Now I want to intersect that with complement A, right? That's what our formula is we're trying to solve. In other words, I'm trying to do those two intersects. You see that? Okay, make sure that the thing on the left there, this is just A complement. I just copied it from up here. And then this is the B union complement C. I just copied it from right here. Okay. So if I intersect those two, what do we get? Yeah, we just get 5, 7, and 9. Okay. Any questions about those basic ideas? Pretty straightforward, I think. Okay. Where it gets tricky here, and now we're going to look at how to generalize set operation problems. Okay. And we're going to pull this off in six minutes. It's going to be quick, but this is the last set of slides here. You'll probably want to review this in the, the PowerPoints at, at home because you have a whole bunch of questions on your homework this Sunday based on this idea right here, okay? So I want to know what is A complement union B, that whole thing, intersected with C complement minus B. Well, what's A, what's B? And I could label them A, B, and C, right? But what's in A? I don't know what's in A. Normally, you have numbers written there or something, right? I don't know what's in A. So how could we even approach solving this? Okay, there's a couple steps that you do. First thing, we label the whole thing as the universe. Everything else, like, the, you'd want to draw a box around that, but I'm just going to use the whole slide instead of drawing a box around it. But the whole thing is the universe. And then you label your, your um, diagrams, your circles in the Venn diagram with A, B, and C. And the, the standard way and the way I'll expect you to do on your homework is this way, starting from top to bottom, left to right, like you read, right? So A, B, C, like that, Okay. Now, now I can at least see, I, I mean, I know what A intersect B is, right? I know where that is on the diagram. Would you agree? I know where A minus B is or whatever. But what I don't know is what is A, what values are A minus B or what values are A union B? I don't know. I can color it in and sure, I can answer the question that way. But what values are in there? Well, there's a technique that's used for generalizing this, for, for big picture conceptualizing it, where you, again, go left to right, and you put just a placeholder for values, right? And then left to right, top to bottom. So it looks like this. One, two, three. Each section of the Venn diagram is labeled. You see that? So if you look at what I did there, right across the top, uh, I, I did those three, and then I did the next three, and then the last two. Okay, so A has got... Um, the main bulk of A there that's not intersecting with anything else is just one, or Roman numeral one. That could be 30 different things. Who knows what it is, but we're just generalizing it, right? And then the part where A intersects B but doesn't intersect C is called Roman numeral two, so on and so forth, right? That makes sense? So now with that, we can solve that problem at the bottom of the screen here, okay? 
So let's move everything over a little bit and see how to walk through this. First, what's the first step in solving these kind of problems? You define all the sets. We still haven't fully defined the set. What is set A? One, two, four, and five. One, two, four, and five, right? Two just happens to be a specific point of A. It's the stuff that intersects with B, but not C, right? But it's still part of A. Does everybody understand that? And again, what is Roman numeral two? It's just a variable, like X in, in algebra. It's just a variable that can represent a bunch of stuff, okay? All right, so we're going to define these, right? A, you already said it's 1, 2, 4, and 5, right? And then B, what's B? 2, 3, 5, 6, and C? 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, yep, very good, okay? Then let's define the complements, right? We don't need B complement because it's not in our equation below, so we're just going to do A and C, which is everything in the universe, which is Roman numeral 1, one through 8, that's not an A, right? So what is that? Yep. Okay. And then C complement, same idea, right? In the last two minutes here, we can pull this off. Let's take a look now. I want to do not A, or sorry, complement A, union B. So I want to union um, this with this, right? So what is the union of that? Sounds good to me, okay? And then the next thing we want to union is the complement of C minus B. The next thing we want to do is the complement of C minus B, okay? I'm going to do this piece, and that equals everything that's in not C that's not in B, right? <laughs> Makes sense. Everything that's in C complement that's not in B. Yeah, so if I look at what's in C complement here, these are in C complement. Which of those are not in B? One's not in B. 2 is, so we're not doing 2. 3 is, so we're not doing that. And 8 is not in B. So the answer is 1 and 8. I heard some different numbers out there, but 1 and 8, that's the correct answer. Now I want to union, or sorry, intersect those last two, right? I want to intersect the A complement union B with C complement minus B. What is the intersect of that? Eight. Just 8. Right? The intersect of that is just A. That is the final answer. Okay? That is it. Literally, that is the last slide. That's twice now. Right to the last minute. Okay? That's everything we covered. Um, you look closely, and we've hit every one of those topics there. Some in a little bit more in depth. Okay? Any questions, guys?